Hi everyone and welcome to this virtual classroom. This is a short little video to demonstrate um, how you might uh, invite a second speaker or a second lecturer or a class teacher um, to a virtual environment like this for either asynchronous or even synchronous um, teaching. Eric is joining me from uh, the South Coast. Hi, Erica. Yeah, me. Hi. Hi, Tom. Looks great. This is the wide classroom view. Um, we've got a kind of uh, zoomed in classroom view here as well. So I'm in my little classroom. There's a backdrop, there's a foreground, and I've also got an LCD screen, which is where um, Erica's appearing. Um, we can make Erica full screen. Um, or a kind of more simpler approach without the kind of distractions of the virtual class classroom. I, I'm just got a virtual background here, the LSE, and, and uh, um, Erica's appearing over my shoulder. This is, might be something similar to what you might see on the news, just like two talking screens, so various different setups. And Tom, I wanted to ask you how you're doing this. I mean, what program are you actually working in here? Yes, so this is OBS, which is Open Broadcasting Software. It's free, and um, all of the resources that I'm using are also free, downloaded from a few different websites. Um, this uh, particular scene, and um, in OBS you can you can make different scenes. So every time I change the view, I'm basically clicking through different scenes. But this scene has a background and a foreground, so I could turn the background off. There we go. So this is without the background. That's really <laughs> And I can turn the foreground off, which is the desk and the bookshelves. <laughs> and how does it know what is the background and what is the foreground here? Um, so I've just defined things in order. So um, at the top of the tree is the foreground. Then we've got my webcam. And then we've got yourself. Um, and then the background. Yep. So you have to order things. Um, in the layers that you want them to appear in, basically. So, um, okay. And do you need any specialist equipment? So the only piece of specialist equipment, and this is one of the fiddly things, is the video can change size occasionally if you've got a live feed, but um, <laughs> depends on internet connectivity. Um, uh, the only piece of specialist equipment I have is my green screen, uh, which appears behind me here. So I can change the kind of sensitivity to the green screen as well. Um, let me have a go at doing that now. Um, that's the only thing that's required really um, as far as specialist equipment. Of, of course, you need a decent webcam as well. So there we go, I made myself invisible. I can, and that's the view of, uh, with my green screen behind me. So there we okay. go. Okay, so basically you put a screen behind you. Have you ordered that off the internet or did you use the special paint? resize you again. <laughs> um, yes, I, I ordered this off the internet, uh, Amazon, 15 pounds, I think it is, and it's quite large. Um, I'm hanging it between my light fittings in my kitchen and my and my uh, main living area of my flat. <laughs> Super. But um, you should be able to use any plain background. So your plain background here might work in OBS. I don't know if you've tried this yet. Um, I've got a, a green screen as well. Um, I also went and got one. I saw yours in your um, apartment and I thought, now what's that for? Hmm, must be something to do with the video cam. So I went and ordered one off the uh, off of Amazon. It, it took a few days just to get here. So it was, yeah. it was very useful. There isn't anything special about green screens. You can just get a piece of green material, um, but I think there is like a really vivid, bright color is quite important to give you a bit of contrast with um, whatever clothes you're wearing to make sure that you don't blend in with the background as well. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's really good. You mentioned earlier that um, this is really good to invite a guest in. Are there other sort of um, advantages to it? So could you use it for like conferencing or something like that? or um, what are those things called, like a web conference, webcam conference? Yeah, I, I, I always envisage this as being a really nice way of having two people interacting um, rather than just the kind of um, Zoom speaker screen where you just see one person at a time. And, and if you were to film um, a Zoom session, um, it only ever records one webcam view at a time. It, it never rec records the gallery view. So this gives you an opportunity to record two people in the same space, 
having a bit of a conversation. Uh, in this example, we've got um, you joining like a guest as if you were on a TV news program, I guess. This is, we're seeing a lot of this on like news night or the, or the news at the yeah. moment. But you can also have these nice setups in the in a classroom as well, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. I'm still figuring out how to make sure that this stays the same. But um, uh, yeah, so I, I think any situation where you've got two people having a conversation, so that might be a panel discussion, it's possible to invite more than one feed via Skype. Mm -hmm. So I'm just speaking to you on Skype right now, but we could add two, three, four other people. And I can, I think we could imagine how we might have them seated around this table, maybe with like virtual heads or, um, or even like, uh, you know, if we go to, to, um, to this screen, we can imagine having a few different video feeds all coming in at the same time. So I think that's a little yep. bit more dynamic than the default settings in Zoom. Yeah, I agree. It's a lovely idea. Um, and certainly a really good tip. It brings in a lot of uh, sort of creativity and liveliness, a bit of dynamism uh, into the discussions. And if this was embedded into a, a lecture chunk, it could be really quite good as well. So no, it's lovely. That's the plan. Thanks for joining me, Erica. Thank you for having me.